Hello everyone, it's Pastor Clive Foster here. I do hope everyone is keeping safe and well. Welcome to this Bible study where we'll be continuing to be looking at our topic, The Harvest Truly is Great. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin our Bible study. Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son Jesus who died that we can have eternal life. We pray even now for this study, Lord, that you'll continue to speak to us, that we will have more understanding in your word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, we're going to be continuing looking at this study, and our focus for today's Bible study will be taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 16 to 19. And this is the time when Jesus declares his public ministry to the world and he enters into the synagogue. So if you can find your Bibles, that's the focus for our study this day, uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 19. And I'll just read that just to give us the essence and the background for where we're going to be studying from. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Today, I'd like to take us through three areas whereby we can be a good harvester. The first one is, the good harvester stays close to the things of God. Secondly, the good harvester allows the Spirit of God to be upon him or her. And thirdly, the good harvester brings good fruit. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. On that first concept, the good harvester stays close to the things of God. What we notice in this scripture, in verse 16, is that Jesus, it says, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Um, and as the custom was, he went into the synagogue. This gives us a little bit of an insight that from an early age, Jesus was accustomed to the things of God. We know this, don't we? We, we remember when he was 12 years old and he was found um, talking to the leading people in the synagogue and his parents were very concerned about him when they couldn't find him. And so we see here that Jesus was a good harvester because he was already close and acquainted with the things of God. He was going to the synagogue. He was reading the scriptures, the holy scriptures as they were. And it's very interesting, how do we know this? Because even when we look on verse 17, he says, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So Jesus was given the book, given the book of Isaiah, and Jesus himself, it says, he opened the book, and it was Jesus himself who found this scripture. So he knew where to look for this scripture. I say this because this is about being a, a good harvester for the things of God. And a good harvester stays close to the things of God. If we are going to be a good harvester in terms of reaping those things that God has called us to do, we need to have that discipline, that attention, uh, that consistency of doing those things that God requires of us. Being in fellowship with one another, going to a place of worship, reading and knowing about God's word. Jesus is the ideal pattern for this. And we see that he was a person who fulfilled the things of God. So he wasn't a good harvester because he just suddenly appeared, but he was acquainted with the things of God. And perhaps you are thinking about, well, how can I better serve God 
and be doing those things where God is pleased in bringing souls to the kingdom. Um, we see this first example of getting good habits and doing those things which God requires of us. You know, the scriptures tell us in Hebrews that we should not forsake the assembling together. It's very interesting. I know that physically we can't be together, but we can still fellowship through this means of technology. And it's important that we continue to fellowship one with another. The scriptures tell us that and it's very, very important that we honour that as well. Now, why is this important that we need to stay close to the things of God if we are to be a good harvester? Well, if we want to get better in knowing what we need to do in terms of bringing in the harvest, we simply have to be doing those things which God desires us to be acquainted with. It's very interesting that when we look in the Old Testament, we see many examples of the kings um, who, who found themselves in, in, in disfavour with God because they simply forsook God. One of the examples of this is, can be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, uh, verse uh, 1 and 2. We see about the king Asa, who was the king of Judah. And if we turn to that passage of scripture, um, it, it simply says, And now the Spirit of God came upon Isaiah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. We see here, even back then and we know today, that when we have that relationship with God, he is going to be closer to us. But if we forsake him, he will forsake us. And so it's imperative that we do those things that God is pleased with. Reading God's word, having good fellowship one with another, God is pleased with. And so the good harvester stays close to God stays close to the things of God. And it's important that we recognise this if we are to become good stewards and good harvesters for God. The second thing I'd like us to focus on if we are to be a good harvester is that the good harvester allows the Spirit of God to be upon him. The good harvester allows the Spirit of God to be upon him. Now, we... We have observed through this scripture that in verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Jesus uh, ratified that he had come to do a particular mission. And the good harvester, as he was to become, he knew straight away that he had the power to do this because the Spirit of God was upon him. And he allowed the Spirit of God to be upon him. So one of the questions I would um, put to you today is this. Are you allowing the Spirit of God to be upon you? Now we have to be very clear about this. When we say allowing God's Spirit, you know, this is about allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us, to speak to our hearts, into our minds, into our thoughts, and we see that displayed in our actions and our behaviours. So, Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And we know that Christ means the anointed one. And because he was anointed, he had that position where he had the authority, the knowledge and all the power to do what God wanted him to do, to be that good harvester. The scriptures tell us that it's important in the book of Acts, that in Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 4 and 5, Jesus told the disciples that they should wait for the Spirit to come, that would empower them, and they will be witnesses, and they would go all over the world, across all cultures, 
across all barriers. And you know, the amazing thing was, they did that. They took the gospel to the whole world. And why were they good harvesters? Because they allowed the Spirit to fill them. They allowed the Spirit to direct their thoughts, intents and direction into the work of God and hence to be great harvesters in the early church. Thousands of people came to know Christ because these disciples simply allowed themselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now this is a deep thing. Being filled with God's Spirit is a blessing, it is an honour, it is the it is, it is something that God says every believer should have. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is for the believer. Jesus says, I must go away that you can receive the Holy Spirit. And so we see the importance of being filled with the Spirit to be a good harvester. And so we must always never lose sight that God is calling us to continue to look to him and allow his spirit to direct us in the paths that he's called us to walk in to. You know, if we want to be doing the things of God, if we want to be filled with the spirit, we have to be in that place and position where we're allowing God to direct our thoughts and our intent. So the third thing that I would like to share with you about the importance of um, becoming a good harvester is that a good harvester always brings good fruit. A good harvester brings good fruit. And how do we know this? Well, we see this in the example of Jesus himself in this passage of scripture. Uh, as we read from uh, this passage in verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. And what is the result? It is to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, we know, don't we, in, in James chapter 2, it talks about faith without works is dead. And we can have faith, but we must have works. And we see here that Jesus declared the works of God that he would be doing uh, because he got himself to the point whereby he was close to the things of God. He got himself to the point whereby he allowed for the Spirit of God to be with him. And as a result of that, he would be bringing forth, bringing forward good fruit. And Jesus lists the good fruit that he was going to be bringing forth. Preach the gospel to the poor. You know, the gospel is liberating. The gospel is, it breaks the, 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 the chains of Satan and the chains of death and sin itself hearing the gospel by faith and receiving by faith. And so we see here that in Jesus' mission, his public mission was to bring the gospel to the poor, the poor who were poor in spirit, poor in not only perhaps in a physical sense or in terms of monetary, but poor in their absence of spiritual wealth. In Luke chapter 6, it talks about, it says, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And this poverty of spirit, the gospel came to be preached, to liberate that and to fill with power and purpose and hope. Jesus goes on to say many other attributes as well with regards to the, 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 the result of, the, of his anointing and the works that he would do, that he would heal the brokenhearted, this is the power of, of God's work. Those who were broken hearted, those who are feeling like there's no hope. It's the power of the gospel that brings hope. It's the power of the gospel that brings restoration. We see that Jesus says he came to proclaim liberty to the captives. Those who were bound by sin, 
those who are who can't get over perhaps certain hurts and conditions, you know, the gospel, the power, the preaching, the the moving of God's spirit sets the captives free. Isn't that wonderful? And this is the hope that we have. And this is what Jesus was speaking into when he declared and he made the announcement of his public ministry. And of course, to give recovery to the sight of the blind. We know, don't we, that Jesus healed so many people. Not only was there a spiritual blindness and he brought a new awakening, but there was the physical restoration of sight. Uh, and we see this with the, 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 the man on the Jericho Road who was blind. And Jesus um, healed him of his sight when he was blind. And there are many other miracles that Jesus did. And to set at liberty those who are oppressed, isn't it amazing that the good harvester um, just doesn't have faith but produces a harvest which is fruitful and which is in, in line with God's will and purpose. And again, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, those who feel that they are downcast and down and out. You know, the power of the gospel, the power of the knowledge of God liberates and frees. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We can read more about this in Leviticus chapter 25. You know, the acceptable year of the Lord was a time when the slaves would be free, all debts would be cancelled, and it would be a completely new start. And this is what Jesus was declaring when he came and spoke about his mission to the world. And it's a mission that he has for all those who wish to participate in the harvest of souls. So where are we in this position, this study? I, I will challenge us again. Are you staying close to the things of God? A good harvester stays close to the things of God, stays close to God's word, stays close in prayer, in fasting, stays close in seeking fellowship one with another. A good harvester allows the spirit of God to be upon him or her. You know that in Thessalonians it talks about uh, that we can quench the spirit we can actually dampen the spirit we can cause the spirit to move away from us so it's important that we are sensitive to god's holy spirit and we finally recognize that the good harvester brings forth good fruit fruit that is liberating to the poor fruit that heals the brokenhearted fruit that proclaims liberty to the captives fruit that sets the blind to see and fruit that brings liberty to the oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I pray that you will be blessed this day and let's continue to be good harvesters for the Lord. Jesus has prayed that the, we would have the labourers who will be out there doing the work. You too and myself and all of us can be a part of this great work to build God's kingdom. May God bless you this day. Thank mm -hmm. you.